I'll get shit done. I have fun. It's my time and I'm the one. I'm breaking through. Hey, hello. Welcome to another version of the Business Renovator. I'm Coach Phil. I'm your host. I'm excited. I get to meet the father of of a, a young fellow that I met uh, through networking. It's amazing. And we're going to talk about, you know, things around uh, you want to win and uh, feel successful. Uh, we can help you make that happen. Maybe you'll get a tip or trick from today's episode. So before we jump in and bring my wonderful guest, Troy, on, if you're watching this live, thank you for being here with us today. And if you're watching it on the replay, remember, hashtag replay, let us know where you're calling in from. And I have to do a shameless plug for my brand. It's, it's actually Focal Point. It's powered by Brian Tracy. Here's a word from us. Welcome back. So if you have a question as a business owner, entrepreneur, sales person, and you want to reach out to a coach, guess what? I'm one of a couple of hundred. And my guest is a uh, coach as well. So you might want to consider reaching out to him if you have a question. Either one, we're here to help in any way, shape, or form. So um, you want to win and feel truly successful, right? That's why you're here watching us, sharing your time, or watching on the replay. Well, you're going to meet Coach Troy, and he's actually a life and business strategist who designs the itinerary for people like you who are needing clarity of goals and the strategies to actually achieving them. His work has helped many people around the world feel empowered, ignited to be inspiring leaders in their family and amongst the people they do business with. Uh, he's also partnered with Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins, and he's learned and executed their content and information. It has inspired him in his own life. He's also a best-selling author, a speaker, a kidpreneur mentor, who Luke is his son. He's an amazing kid. I haven't met his other son yet, but I'm sure he's pretty amazing as well. And he's also a very successful business person in his own right, $400 million in sales. Let's bring him on. I can't I can't wait to meet him. Come on. Get up here, Troy. There you are. Welcome hey, to buddy. the show. How are you, Phil? I'm just wonderful. <laughs> good, good. I hope you are also. I am. I'm absolutely amazing. I'm excited. What's the best thing that's happened to you since uh, over the last week? Just one little nugget, maybe. Uh, you know what? I started a brand new mastermind with uh, with my son, Luke, that you mentioned. Cool. Yeah. Um, that was the best thing because right off the get-go, uh, we got to share some, uh, some strategies from Bob Proctor, uh, who passed away at... Uh, just over a week ago now and um yeah and, and luke and i we shared out uh did a a uh, mastermind session and show people a very important part of what bob taught and uh and will continue to teach through us uh which is creating uh worthy goals so we had a lot of fun it was exciting oh that sounds very exciting you know one of the things i liked about proctor's message um he would often say you know if you're doing what you love to do, why would you want to retire? If you're doing what you love to do, why would you take a vacation? I don't think he was opposed to vacation, but I like the message that I got out of that. And what I got out of that was do what makes your heart sing, and then the rest is easy, and you can in, you can integrate what you do with your vacation. Because there's a song, I should have I never thought of it until today, just right in the moment, there's a song called Vacation. And I never really paid attention to the words until I was dealing, uh, working with a client of mine, a group of salespeople, and they were playing the song before I got on. And I said, what's that song? I hear it all the time on TikTok. And they told me what it was, and I listened to the lyrics. And the lyrics are, I'm on vacation every day. 
I'm working my occupation. I'm on vacation. So whatever you're doing, if you're in that state, like Bob lived his life, he he That's said right. he he said he was going, and you know this better than I do. He said he's going to do what he does until he dies, and he, and he literally did. Yeah, you know, he was always excited uh, yeah. about uh, saying that he had achieved so much, but that he had felt that that was only the beginning, and he was excited about figuring out what else was going to be coming his way in the future. Yeah. And he literally said that up until, until he passed. And so I, I like that advice, no matter what, I, I think that people, you know, Phil, I, I, you brought up a really good point. And I think one thing as coaches, you've heard it and, and we've heard all over is people trying to sell the idea of a work-life balance. And I keep trying to figure out what that balance really is because yeah, obviously, too. well, because well, I think one of them is, you know, you're so, if you have that much going on where you feel like you're being pulled in a different direction, maybe we have to figure out why one is pulling away from the other so much. And maybe we need to combine the two so that they work. Right. Because if I worked, I, I, you know, I decided something, you know, qu quite a few years ago when Luke was nine was, you know, well, even b before that, but if you look at, I could have been like everybody else and tried to work really hard, come home, be the, the best parent, get my kids ready for college and and so on. But instead I'd be that person looking for that work-life balance. But instead I incorporate my whole life, my whole business into, into my family. There is no balance. We're, we're living the product all day long. And I think that's, what's important. Or is there balance because you're living it all day long? You that's don't what I mean. There is no, there is no balance. That's right. Yeah. You move the whole ball, you move the two opposing fields into the center of the teeter totter. And it just stays there and just dances in harmony. Yeah, it's a lot easier, right? Because you got to turn things off, but I think you got to, I think you got to really realize what it is you want. Oh, there is a magic thing, right? What's your major definite purpose? Or your, yeah. as Simon Sinek's popularized it by saying, mm -hmm. what's your why? If you go back in history, it's what's your major definite purpose. And uh, Napoleon Hill's great uh, lessons, he talks about that. Uh, major definite purpose of burning desire. Yeah. And if you're yeah. living that, it's wow. I've seen pictures of you and your family. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if probably Luke sharing them because I follow both of you. But uh, you guys are as a family uh, living in the, the boonies, which is a great place. It's west of Orion. Yeah. You're just in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains and um, you're living and playing in a great place. You know, that was the thing with us was you know, deciding it, it, this is all because of deciding what you really want, Phil. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, this is the proof of it. You know, we used to, <clears throat> we used to, you know, dream about things or look for that balance and, you know, you'd get away to go camping and you'd do, <clears throat> I don't know, you'd work really hard to have a few weeks off. We started designing, you know, you'd have your vision boards and whatnot. And it's, it's crazy when you really start to learn the science of, of how to not only envision a really worthy goal, but how to implement it and figure that out. And, you know, that was something that Bob taught me and I'm happy to be able to do that for other people for the rest of my life. Because when you put out a vision, it's the same as a flight, you know, when you know when it's going to land. And so we started, you know, drawing out, I didn't realize at the time what we were even doing, but we were drawing out A-frame homes. And my wife was taking a picture of a, she's a, a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. And so they had to make up vision boards and she was helping teach some Tony Robbins material, her and the kids to their group. And, uh, and they were, they were working through vision boards and whatnot. And here she had taken pictures of, of an A-frame home and, and put them on this vision board and, and started to, uh, you know, had the, the, the name Canon Askets for the park right behind her home and um, putting all these things on, the, on this vision board. And the crazy part is, is now you fast forward and that vision board, I, I should go get it from the Dojang, but it, that home or very similar to it right in front of Canon Askets sign all those things is now actually where we live. And so, you know, we said we want to work together as a team. You know, we put the, we do homeschooling. We do all of these things now together. Luke is literally the vice president of my coaching company and he's 13 years old. You know, he was nine when he started. And, and I think that's, that's what makes true happiness, Phil, is when you align not only your goal um, and find out and get your, your kids and your wife to bring out their goal, and then make a family goal together. That's what made it fun. And so, yeah, I, I don't know that I could be happier, to be honest with you. That's amazing.
It's not surprising though, because the people that I've studied and had mentored me, whether it's Bob Proctor, uh, Val Vandewal, Brian Tracy, or another fellow, Lou Tice, who really helped me mm. take the complicated psychological phraseology and put it into things that I, I could understand. He really dumbed it down. And uh, he, he did say that. He, 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 I'm, all of them said that is to uh, look who's important in your life. And you can't set goals for other people, but you can get their goals to align with what it's important for you. So running your family is a family unit, not mom, dad, and the kids as a separate entity. They're all contributing. I've, I've seen your, and I've had your, so actually, he beat you to the show. Luke was, <laughs> he usually you. does. <laughs> I had to be okay with that for a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, he's a pretty interesting young cat. I was thinking, man, yeah. if I was if I was thinking like he was at his age, what could I have become? So I'm I'm excited to see where he's going. Yeah, it's uh you know, we carry I, I carry three gold cards, we all do. And uh you know, we learned the power of those gold cards and you know, I've got one in my pocket I've got all three in my pocket at all times. The funny thing is, so does my 10 year old, so does my 13 year old, and so does my wife. And, the, and I think the cool part is, is when you understand that having that intention where you literally become obsessed with what you want, yeah, things naturally happen. Like it's crazy when you think about how, how obsessed you can be on things you don't want to be. And why does it seem like they keep coming to you? Yeah. Well, it's because you're focused on it, right? You get more of what you're focused on. And I have a gold card in my pocket, Phil, one that has, you know, what my personal. Does, uh, you know, outcome will be, um, I've got a, a business goal, goal card that, that states I'm going to serve 500 people through Bob's program and, uh, this year. And, uh, and then I have a goal card for the family of the outcomes we're going to achieve too. And when you keep, when you're aligned like that and you share them as a family with each other, none of them align with each other, but we understand them. And they all are just so beautiful and it's so cool to help each other get there. Yeah. And how many people, if on your show today have a goal, almost none, uh, that they're really passionate about going, um, number two, how many people have a business goal that any of their staff know about almost, I would say like literally almost a hundred percent zero. And, uh, and how many people have really talked about it as a family or, or, you know, or a community of their people around them, you know, what's something they could work on together. And that, that's a solid zero. Yeah. I, I, I experienced that with my own, uh, client base. Uh, I, I do a bunch of work for corporations as well. And the difference between, um, the individuals, uh, at, at different levels and the leadership roles, places they they tend to have more goals written down versus mm -hmm. the ones that are um, showing up just to look after their, their basic needs, like Maslow's hierarchy of triangle, right? The top is uh, actual self-actualization. The bottom is survival. Many yeah. people live in that lower level and survival and they're hoping and uh, praying and that somebody's going to save them. Brian Tracy says people are standing by the bus stop waiting for a bus to come along. It ain't coming. You got to create your own bus and learn how to drive it, right? If you have that triangle going on the way that Phil just described it, Phil, is go flip that piece of paper upside down because it's it's in the wrong order, right? It's uh, I, I think that people have to stop being so hard on themselves. Get back yeah. into what it is that they really want to achieve. Figure out how your business is going to be able to do that. Figure out how you can incorporate your whole family into your vision and your goal and have fun. What? And have fun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know if it's, if it's not fun, why are we doing? It? I mean, there's some things that I I get to do and experience in my own business. There's some things that are like this is a lot of fun, um, but there's some other things that are the, the minutia. You know, the things that we are responsible for. I was going to say what we have to do, but we don't have to do a darn thing. Like I don't have to pay taxes or even um, file as long as I'm okay with the consequences. Exactly. You know, I think, I think, uh, remove the idea of you have to do anything and enjoy the opportunity that you get to pay taxes or that you get to, um, to, you know, have bills to pay or you get, you know, you, that, that's all part of a beautiful journey. Absolutely. And if you apply it, everything happening to you, to you rather than for you, I think that's, there's a lot to that. 
I don't know if I have time to jump into it, but I'm going to touch on it because I know it was one of the things uh, I, 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 I express it differently, but I know what it is. And I know you're, you're an expert in it because of your affiliation with uh, Proctor Gallagher. And that is this crazy word that sounds like a pair of dimes, but it's not what it is. It's a paradigm. And it's really accumulation of habits and maybe you can tell us a little bit about yeah that. yeah it's a multitude of habits and beliefs you you, you hit her uh coach phil you know a paradigm it really simply put people have heard the word and they don't really understand it and really when you in a simple form a paradigm are the habits and beliefs that you really ha- are programmed with in your dna that that programming comes from from your parents it comes from other mentors it comes from watching certain movies or reading certain books or listening to certain news and it's it's what really makes you, um, you know, believe the way you do and create actions that are getting you the results that you have today. And if you don't like those results um, that you have, whether it's in your bank account or, um, you know, maybe something on your body or your relationships, you got to change what it is that you're feeding it. And, you know, take a look at what habits are you, are you using and, and beliefs and what is the attitude towards that? Because when you really take a step back and you, and you really figure out, you know, what it is you truly want as a result. And you can figure out what you did today, either got you toward your goal or prevented you. Um, You can start to figure out that there's some really cool correlation. And what I would recommend to anybody with paradigms is don't be hard on it. Don't worry about changing it. As Bob told me one time, you can't change a paradigm, but you can start a new one. You can, and you can create new habits and believe in things in a different way so that you can really, you know, get some really fascinating results in your life. And, the most successful people will tell you that if you actually look, most of the successful people do come from a broken home or from a past that was quite challenging, but they created, they figured out the habits to really practice and really get good at and not being all over the map. And as some people would say, you know, not doing a thousand things two or three times, but do two or three t- things a thousand times and really practice what it is that you can get there with. And you'll start to develop a brand new uh, belief system that are comp- uh, uh, you know, accompanied by um, habits and actions with that new belief system that are going to produce results beyond your wildest dreams. But you have to know where you're going so that you know where you're, how you're going to get there. And that's anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. Yeah, and Napoleon Hills can go back to there. I know Proctor was a big fan of that, read the book I, apparently every day. But in there, it's uh, to every... Uh, adversity there's an equal or greater opportunity yeah. if you've got if you think that way there, there's uh, one of my mentors uh, taught me something i don't fly an airplane but um the the story around it or the message in it is powerful um our our attitude is not neither negative or positive until we make a decision right so if you think of uh, attitude in an airplane it's is the nose going down or is it going up so are we moving towards our goal or away from our goal so when we put the, we, we talked pre-show about how we get, we as a population get stuck on, uh, are putting our energy on the things we don't want and we're, we're, and then we're surprised that they show up. And if we were to take that energy and put it towards what we want attitudinal wise, uh, and what, what if those good things show up? Well, we're, and, uh, what Harbecker says where thoughts go, energy flows and results show. And you were saying, if we don't like our results, change something right yeah you know i like your airplane analogy it's something that i talk about phil is it's no different than thinking about an airplane taking off from the airport in calgary and going to to uh new york where that you know it's isn't it funny how we already know three months ahead of time what time that plane will take off (laughs) and what time it'll land when we get a little closer we're going to find get a turbulence forecast and some weather and we're going to figure out how much weight we're going to load and how much fuel we need pretty simple little things. We're literally just going to fly there and we already know exactly to the minute when we're going to touch down. So what if, you know, what if, you know, you, me, your audience, um, what if you really looked at today and you just said, let's just pick money. And if you picked, you know, I want to make $110,000 a year and I'm making uh, 60 now, what, you know, that seems like such a stretch. Well, that's cool because that's a real goal, not $5,000 raise. I'm talking about like double your money raise. Right. And you figured out, okay, so that's going to be our result. And now you already get envisioned of what that will actually feel like to, to see that on your T4 or, or your, your, your pay stub that you've made $110,000. What does that feel like? 
And how do you get emotionally attached to that? How do you feel that? And knowing that on this date, that's when we're going to touch down on the tarmac with $110,000. Now, the cool part is, is we can actually start to figure out what are the things that we have to start believing, stop believing, and be able to start looking at those things. And what are the actions or resources that we're going to have to pull together to get there? Obviously, if we keep doing what we did today or yesterday, we're going to still get the 60K. So we have to change that and get really infatuated with what it is that we want and, and plan around it. Life is really that simple. And if you really look at getting really, really infatuated with, uh, with a goal that scares the heck out of you, something you've never done. And if you look at Bob, Bob would say an ABC goal, Phil. An A goal is something you know <clears throat> that you can get. A, a B type goal is a, something you think you can get. And the C type goal is something crazy fantasy. Well, for me, living in the house that we wanted was a fantasy. Not in a, in a million years did I think that that could happen. But when I started to become infatuated with it, it was probably the easiest process in the world. Yeah, I, I totally get that. And when I've lived in that state and when I'm in that state, yeah. I've just from a thought idea, uh, I've made things happen. This is uh, taking everything I've learned from uh, people like Bob and his predecessors and Lou Tice was talking about. Uh, I, I was at a place in my life where I uh, was broke, brokenhearted, no place to live and in debt. And so uh, most people would say, go get a job. And every time somebody said that to me, I went, <laughs> right? I don't want a job. I've been there. I don't want to work in corporate Canada or North America anymore. So I decided that I would start a business. So that's what I did with that place. And uh, here I am today. And one of the things that helped support me through that process and grow my own business was um, if we know what we want and why we want it and stifle a how, we can get closer to achieving and becoming the person we weren't before and maybe even more than what we ever imagined initially. Because along the way, you learn things, you increase your efficacy, which is your ability to get shit done, and um, competencies and confidences. And by setting that seed thought, what ends up happening, well, for example, just to give somebody, people, our audience a, a tangible, as I was looking for a, a laptop, and I had no money, no credit, and I was in debt, right? So, But I needed a laptop that with certain traits, but I could sell a software that I was representing. and oh, That would help. <laughs> well, the downtown core wouldn't let them put it on their, their mainframes anymore, you know, right. malware and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so I thought, how can I creatively and innovatively get a laptop? I'll shorten the story. I went through the processes of believing in it and I could get it. And I didn't care when people laughed at me. I was testing a theory, a hypothesis. Anyway, I ended up over, over the, uh, that short period of time. I had three offered up. They didn't fit because I needed to refine my ask. The first one showed up was uh, the reason it didn't fit was they said, yeah, you could have it when I don't need it. And we just found out we need it at the same time. So I need to get clarity around that. So being specific, like you said, decide what it is you really want. And when you yeah. get crystal clear, laser focused or focal pointed on it, it's easier for the brain to find it. Our reticular activating system kicks in and clues and tips and ideas and people and books and things all come together, give us more ideas and we start moving. It's like adding fertilizer to the seed we planted in the garden anyway to, to make so it beautiful short, you said we, that so perfect when we capsulate this story i using that process you know i didn't deliberately look for uh free computers thereafter but i've had seven and one came from hp for a trade show uh i was looking for you know local uh suppliers and they said well because you know they're going to get their brand out there at the trade show to do with the same software I'm trying to sell. And somebody was in that space. They said, well, reach out to HP. They have a marketing department and they have equipment like that just for these purposes. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know what I didn't know until I started asking questions. So they ended up shipping me three to Calgary. We could have them, for, uh, I think we had them for about uh, two weeks. So we could try them out, play with them. And then when we were done with the trade show, they said, put them back in the box, stick this label on it and the uh, shippers will ship them back. It's amazing what you can come up with if you just ask, but you got to know what to ask for. Yeah, I, if I could just run with that just for a second. Yeah, run, know, run, Mark, run. <laughs> Mark Victor Hansen, I mean, a, a friend, great man. And, uh, he, you know, he has the book Ask. And, you know, and it's so true. Like you just made me think because I think that's the thing is when you, when you know what you really 
so, it, you know, I want to give people something here because whether you're running a business or a company or, or just your family, but come up with just one goal, one outcome in the next month. Not a to-do list goal. Yeah, not a to-do list. No, no. Something you just like, you know, do you want to, you know, I don't, I don't know. Think of a, a goal, an outcome. Like, let's just say we want to increase, we want to sell an extra hundred thousand dollars in sales or something like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Come up with something that's kind of cool. How about that family and, trip that you always wanted to go to, but you never thought how we could get there. Right. So yeah, let's, let's pick a, an, an Orlando vacation and you're yeah. like, and let's make it nice, like a $15,000. Maybe that's not that nice anymore. I don't know, but it, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, but find, find a trip and stay on the resort and then literally, you know, get really in, in, in feeling good about that, you know, yeah already envision that you're already there. You've done this already with work trips. You, you know where you're going to land. You, you know that idea of the, the cab. Put all that in play, how the kids are going to smile and laugh and the wine and the and the rides and the fun and, and everything else and really get in, in, with that. Then go to work and tell your team about what it is that you want to achieve in six months from now. You're going you're gonna to have this trip booked. And find out from everybody else at work what's some a goal that they have that they want to achieve. And nobody judge. And nobody have any excuses, and uh, and just and tell everybody, you know, next, you know, if you if you're coming up with something that you don't want to hear, that's a limiting belief, and just honestly figure, okay, what can we sell? What can we do for our customers? What's something we can try today that we can instantaneously create this kind of value, get this kind of money in return, and be able to book that trip like nothing to it. Right. Ask people for, you know, what it is we could do. What can you do? What do you see as a possibility? I think that's what's fun. Ask yourself, what's something you've never tried before that you could literally do? Or who's somebody you could phone and say, you know, could our company do this for you? And just start talking about it. Like Phil said, like you reached out to HP and you simply asked. Yeah. Right? But you had a goal because you knew you had to sell software. So that's the thing. It's not just calling HP saying, hey, can I borrow a laptop? You told them, I had, I have a, a task. I'm going to a trade show. This is how this whole thing's going to play out. Do you want to be a part of it or not? I'd like to ask you that now. Yeah. And they said yes. It was like Jack Canfield, a buddy of uh, Mark Victor Hansen's. Um, they talk about you got to be an ask hole. Yeah. Right? You got to ask, ask, oh, ask, yeah. ask, 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 ask. Well, how many people did Colonel Sanders ask yeah. to take a look at his recipe? Yeah. Yeah, and he was no young buck. And nope. he, you know, he, he had a goal, a vision. He was going to be the world's greatest chicken, uh, fried chicken uh, guy, right? And he was. <clears throat> hey, I got to bring up Rod Goodwin. I don't know if you've met him yet. But he's yeah, asking this question. T4, he's out of the U.S. What do they call it in the U.S.? Oh, uh is it, that's not a 1099, right? No, and I, I do know the name. It's uh, it's like when you, uh, it's your income statement, your personal income statement yeah. for the year. Ron's a, a, a t-shirt manu. Well, he doesn't manufacture t-shirts. He put his silk screens and prints on them. And his original trade in life, speaking of about paradigm shift, he was a carpenter, but he got into this and he's he's uh, apparently really good at it. Where's right. he from? Uh I can't pronounce the way it is, but it's near the ocean. It sounds like cars are no, I, no. When he walks home and he's talked to me, it sounds like he's near the ocean. It actually is, but it's the cars going by. Ron, if you're still there, tell us where you're at. Uh, I, I believe you should he, connect with Ron. He's in Massachusetts, I think. That's cool. Anyway, T four. What a guy. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's been a guest on the, the business runner uh, renovator as well. I've had some really interesting people. And you know what? The time goes so freaking fast. It's already like almost 30 minutes is here. And we just scratched the surface. So before you depart, if mm -hmm. somebody wanted to know more about paradigm shifting uh, and wanted to connect with you, I'm going to bring something up to help them find you. There it is. And I'm also going to share this screen. That's your website, which is where this address is pointing to if i got that figured out right there's another one too coach troy.ca but yeah, that one's perfect yeah schedule a call and just love to 
I think that's the thing we need right now, Phil, in our world today. It's not that I think I know we need it, is people have been confused and they're, you know, they're all over the map as to what you're supposed to think and believe. And, you know, like Bob would say, think into the result that you want. Yeah. Let's think about that and let's get focused on that. Don't worry about who's doing what to who and how and when and, and everything no. else in and, and the news. I mean, the believe it or not, the what is it Don Miller said was teaching there that, uh, you know, the brain burns an incredible amount of calories just trying to prevent pain. And wow. I'm trying to say, you know, it, I, I didn't think of this. And how, so just think about this. Everything you do today is either going to gain pleasure or avoid pain. But truthfully, it's like 95. Well, in today's world, it's probably 99% of your day, whether it's eating or sleeping or, or going to work or doing whatever, was literally to avoid the pain of failure or dying or all those things. And so let's make it more fun. Let's seriously write down what it is that you want to achieve in the next six months without any limitations. You have no family, you have no money, you have no nothing. You just literally coach Phil places you on somewhere on the planet. Where do you want to live? And what do you, what do you want your legacy to be? And what you should be, you know, that really come up with that part. And how can you share that with your family and encourage them to also tell you too? spend the next couple of weeks with your family and your coworkers talking about the outcome. Yeah, I like that. And, and I'm going to add on that. I'm thinking just to make sure people are clear, don't you start with thinking about it. Absolutely. Make sure you write it down. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, it, it's not written in concrete and even it will to get a jackhammer and break it up and rewrite it. So just write it, your ideal life chapter and figure, you know, between Troy and myself, we've got the power. We're going to give you the, the, the magic wand. And in that magic wand, it's got everything you need to do to make it happen. Anytime you hear something that's going to take you away from what Troy's saying, that's, a, well, how am I going to do that? So next, move on. That doesn't count. Just possibilities, not impossibilities. Because yeah. that's the way to get there is to focus on the end result you want. And um, that's a great tip. That's a great place to say goodbye to the world for today. Well, wait a minute. There's one more comment. Let's see who's here. Nothing important. It's somebody spamming us. So we'll just ignore those people. But the people like Ron and others out there watching this, do what uh, Troy's recommending and uh, give it a go. And then, you know, after you've done it for a while, maybe shoot us a note and let us know what happened. Did it work? Did it not work? Or if you want to accelerate, align yourself with a coach and a mentor because having your feet held to the fire, metaphorically, um, is a way to make sure that you stay congruent to what you said you wanted to make happen and get it done before life passes you up. Amen. Troy, thank you for being here, buddy. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. You're very welcome. Wow, wasn't that fun? Troy is an interesting dude. I'm going to see if I can get him back in a few months and we'll talk about something else. Or maybe it'll be a chance for you to follow up and tell us that, hey, I tried that and it worked. Or I tried it and it almost worked. Or I tried it and I need help with it. Whatever it is, uh, let us know what that is. And um, I'm going to bring up one little thing because I, I really think this is an important piece of um, philosophy. And this is from a mentor of mine. Actually, he was a mentor to Bob Proctor. And Bob Proctor uh, passed away on uh, February 4th. So his mentor, Val Vandewal, said, uh, be wonderful. Be like the you and wonderful because you represent you. You're unique and you are wonderful. Now go out there and act like it. That's what I would say to you about that. We'll see you on the next version of the Business Renovator. Thanks for being here. I get shit done, I have fun, it's my time and I'm the one, I'm breaking through.